Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to this video on problem vocabulary. There are six types of vocabulary that can cause particular problems for IELTS students. You must be able to recognise them in speech and write them correctly in your answers. The exercises in this lesson will help you to achieve this. Have a pen and piece of paper handy to write down the answers as you go along. The six types of vocabulary are time, numbers, prices, dates, letters and addresses. Expect them to come up in your test. Some of them certainly will. Time is particularly tricky as there are so many different ways to say and write it. Here are six examples. These sentences are typical of dialogue you'll hear in a conversation in section one of the test. Listen to them and try writing the times down as you hear them. When you've done this, read the transcript on the next slide. Number one. The express train leaves at 9.30 a.m. Two. The best option would be to take the 7.06 bus. Three. There are two buses that will get you there. One just before nine o'clock and one just after. Number four. The 8.55 is probably the best one to take. Number five. Yes, I think I'll catch the five to nine bus. And number six. There is also a train departing at quarter to nine. Pause the video while you check your answers and analyse any mistakes you made. This short exercise illustrates just how many different ways there are to express time, both spoken and written. You need to be familiar with them all. Next, we'll look at numbers. Numbers can come up in many different contexts, so make sure that you know how they sound and how to write them. It can be difficult to understand some numbers in certain accents, so listen to them in a range of accents as you practice your listening skills. In all accents, teens and tens numbers sound very similar and are easily confused. For example, 13 and 30. 14 and 40, 15 and 50, 16 and 60, 17 and 70, 18 and 80, and 19 and 90. Now listen to these sentences. What numbers do you hear? Write them down, then check the answers on the next slide. 1. She's going to be 18 next birthday. 2. My best friend lives just down the road at number 50. 3. He ran his first marathon at 60 years old. 4. My niece cycles to work every day, even though it's over 13 miles each way. 5. The traffic was so bad it took me 40 minutes to get home from work yesterday. Here are the answers. 18. 50, 60, 13 and 40. If you've made any mistakes, go back and listen again. Also, be sure that you recognise numbers in the hundreds when they're spoken and that you know how to write them. Here's some practice for you. Listen to these sentences and write down the numbers you hear. Then check them on the next slide. Number one. There are 365 days in the year. Number two. Mike and Sally hope to raise lots of money for charity by cycling from Land's End to John O'Groats, which is a distance of 874 miles. Three. The climb to the very top of the world's tallest and fastest slide, located in Kansas City, is 264 steps. And number four. With the help of genealogists, they were able to trace their family tree back 628 years. Here are the answers. 365, 874, 264 and 628. If you made any mistakes, go back and listen again. Next we come to numbers in the thousands. These are less common in the IELTS listening test, but come up occasionally. Practice writing them down and speaking them out loud to get familiar with how they sound. 
It can be helpful to write the numbers in both figures and words, for example, 8,415, 2,731, 7,010, 6,911. Very large numbers will most likely be used in a context where they're rounded up or down to the nearest ten or hundreds of thousands. This means that they will have lots of zeros on the end, which can make them challenging to write correctly. Again, you need to be familiar with how they sound and are written. Listen to this sentence and select the correct answer from the list. There are over 33,000 known species of fish on the planet. The correct answer is C. Finally, you need to recognise and be able to write ordinal numbers, for example, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. I'll talk more about ordinal numbers when we come to dates. Another common way that numbers are used in the listening test is as prices. Recordings often include discussion of the cost or price of things, especially in section one, which is a conversation between two people. Generally, one person will be trying to make a booking of some sort, for example, a hotel room, flights or theatre tickets. You're most likely to hear the price expressed as dollars, pounds or euros. Learn the symbols and know how to write the amounts. Listen to these sentences, including prices. Write them down, then check the answers on the next slide. 1. The fare for the bus to Glasgow is £4.35. 2. Tickets cost $6.50 for adults and $3.25 for children. 3. If you pay in advance for the full river cruise, it will be $15.75. Here are the answers. Again, if you made any mistakes, go back and listen again. Next we come to dates. One of the biggest challenges with dates is their spelling. Make sure that you can correctly spell all the days of the week and the months of the year. Remember that they always start with a capital letter. As there are a maximum of 31 days in any month, you'll also need to recognise and be able to write ordinal numbers up to the 31st. In speech, you may hear the day or the month spoken first, for example, Today is the 30th of November, 2019. We're going to visit my grandmother on June the 10th. In American English, the word the is often admitted. For example, Independence Day in the USA is on July 4th each year. Also study how years are said. Here are some examples. 1574, 1600, 1701 or 1701 2000 2013 2020 When it comes to writing dates in your answers, follow this advice from one of the official IELTS websites. Pause the video and read through it, noting the different ways that dates can be written. Based on this information, Try writing the date you hear in these three sentences. The answers on the next slide give some, but not all, the possible answer formats. Number 1. The Battle of Waterloo took place on the 18th of June, 1815. Number 2. The 17th of December, 2019, will be my father's 86th birthday. Number 3. The school holidays start on July 21st this year. Did you get the answers correct? Pause the video and check. With dates, you don't always need to include the year, especially when referring to the current year. Something else to be aware of is how decades are often expressed. For example, the period 1960 to 1970 is often referred to as the 60s and 1970 to 1980 as the 70s, and 1980 to 1990 as the 80s. Finally, learn these common synonyms. 
weekly, which is once a week, daily, which means every day, fortnight, which is a period of two weeks, and weekend, which is Saturday and Sunday. Sometimes the answer to a listening question will be a name, such as a place name or a person's surname, which may be spelt out in the recording. Hence, you must be able to recognise the different letter sounds. Pay particular attention to letters that sound similar when spoken. For example, letters with the E sound. B, C, D, E, G, P, T and V. Letters with an A sound, such as A, J, K. M and N also sound very similar. For practice, listen to these two sentences and write down the names spelt out. Then check your answers on the next slide. Remember that names of people and places always start with a capital letter. Number one. My surname is Beardman. That's B-E-A-R-D-M-A-N. Two. The hotel is in Drapersville Street. I'll spell that for you. D R A P E R S V I double L E. Did you get caught out by the double L, meaning two L's? Listen again if you need to. If you get a form completion question, you'll probably have to write the details of an address. The form will look something like this. To do this successfully, you need to be familiar with address formats. Usually the address will be in either a UK format or an Australian format. You might also get a US address, which is similar to an Australian one. Here are examples of all three. Make sure that you can spell common words such as road, street and avenue. Also note that postcodes are made up of letters and numbers and that the letters are always written in capitals. They will be spelt out in the recording if required for an answer, so listen carefully. I hope you found these IELTS listening exercises helpful. Listen out for these types of vocabulary during your listening practice to become more familiar with them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video soon. Bye for now.